Hello, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for tuning in to Jamaica Magazine. In today's show, we look at how the Ministry of Justice is making access to legal counsel a lot easier. Plus, the Jamaica Forage Clubs is training of future agriculturalists. My career choice is uh, an health inspector, so it's really going to help me to be what I want to be. Stay tuned for all the details, but first, a reminder to protect yourself from the Zika virus. This is the Aedes aegypti mosquito that spreads the Zika, chikungunya, and dengue viruses. Protect yourself from the bite of this mosquito. A message from the Ministry of Health. Good day, I'm Tamara McHale and this is your GIS News for Thursday, June 9. Local businesses are being urged to seize opportunities to expand their market reach to Costa Rica. The call comes from Prime Minister Andrew Holness and follows recent bilateral talks with President Luis Guillermo Solis. President Solis invited Jamaicans to participate in their trade exhibition, which is to be held in Costa Rica in September 2016, in order that Jamaica can identify possible ways of increasing trades in goods and a variety of manufactured products in an effort to address our negative trade balance with Costa Rica. The Prime Minister and President Solis also agreed to increase trade relations and technical cooperation in the areas of medical supplies and technology, agriculture, security and tourism. In the meantime, Jamaica and Cuba have committed to increase language training, giving more Jamaicans the opportunity to be fluent in Spanish. The truth is that Cuba will need to rapidly make English their official second language. And Jamaica will rapidly need to make Spanish our official second language. A multi-destination tourism agreement was also signed with Cuba. We acknowledge the importance of working together expeditiously to facilitate the movement of people through the region to support multi-destination tourism in the Caribbean. And Cuba and Jamaica will be sharing expertise and best practices on tackling the potential threat of climate change and rising sea levels on the region. President Castro offered to provide experts to provide advanced data gathering, modeling and projections for mitigation and the definition of appropriate responses by the state. Prime Minister Holness was updating Parliament on Tuesday about his participation in last weekend's 7th Summit of the Association of Caribbean States held in Cuba. Operations recently got underway at the Long Pond Sugar Factory, rescuing the livelihoods of over 230 farmers and 130 workers in the factory. It's the result of government intervention to keep the factory operational for the 2016-2017 crop year, while the Long Pond owners search for new investors and other revenue streams. Agriculture Minister Carl Sumuda told Parliament on Tuesday that $180 million allocated in the previous administration for transportation support had been diverted to repair the factory. We are currently in the process of rescuing 70,000 tons of cane. while honoring a commitment to supply 45,000 tons to Worthy Park to give them additional throughput to make their factory more profitable. Yeah, yeah. He said government's temporary operations of the factory had resulted in the milling of 4,550 tons of cane and the production of 327 tons of sugar. A memorandum of understanding will be signed on Friday for a comprehensive transitional living program for children in state care. While making his contribution to the sectoral debate on Wednesday, Youth State Minister Floyd Green said it was being implemented to improve the living conditions for young people leaving residential care at age 18. The project will also facilitate the creation of a safe and appropriate transitional living facility for 40 females right here in Kingston who upon leaving state care have nowhere to go. The initial scope of the program has also been expanded to build a transitional home for boys in Southfield, St. Elizabeth. 
The program is being executed by the University of the West Indies through the Caribbean Child Development Center in partnership with the Child Development Agency. And finally, more young people are being encouraged to become creators, innovators, and owners of intellectual property instead of being only users and consumers of technology. And whether you are going to own your businesses, because we need some Fortune 500 companies in Jamaica, we need 80% of you to go to university. We need all of you to be fully trained and certified and equipped so you can tackle all the challenges that the 21st century will throw at you. The Education Minister was speaking recently at the inaugural Success Rally for Teens in Kingston. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thanks for watching. Motorists, know your rights as road users. If you are stopped by the police in a road check, the police have the right to ask for your driver's license and vehicle documents. If you don't have the documents on you, you can ask for five days to provide them at a convenient police station. If you don't have vehicle insurance, you can be prosecuted and face the court. If you fail to renew the registration license, the police are entitled to seize your vehicle. If the police wish to search your vehicle, they should tell you the reasonable grounds for wanting the search. If you are given a ticket, sign it only if you plan to pay the fine and not contest the charge in court. And please be reminded, children under 18 years must wear a seatbelt, even if they are seated in the back. Know your rights. Knowledge of the traffic road code makes it easier to work with the police as they do their job to make the road safer for you and everyone else. Want to know what are your rights as a consumer or get legal advice on how to make a will or access the estate of a deceased loved one? The answers are coming to a community near you. The Ministry of Justice through its Legal Aid Council is hosting a series of justice fairs across the island. Here's more. Free legal advice Lawyers are expensive, and here we have a legal aid um, council with lawyers who are capable of giving the sort of advice and a sort of general knowledge of what is happening in the courts. Free entertainment. Reggae music is a thing you can't get too much. Job blessing is a thing you can't get too much to much. I never too much. Free admission. Everything is free at the Ministry of Justice's Justice Fairs, where costly legal service and documents are offered to all who attend. In 2016, the Legal Aid Council is embarking on a series of justice fairs. The council and outfit of the Ministry of Justice has partnered with the Citizen Security and Justice Program 3 to host at least four justice fairs across the country. These events, which are free to the public, are being held particularly in vulnerable communities. The first one was held at the Jose Marti Technical High School and welcomed residents of Central Village, March Penn and other surrounding communities of Twickenham. Sometimes persons find it difficult to access the various institutions that may be able to assist them. So we are actually removing from offices and going into the field and especially into areas, um, inner city areas that may need the assistance most. It's absolutely important that members of co the communities and surrounding communities in which we have this justice fair, but these uh, justice fairs, as can be seen and known, a number of other government agencies are in attendance. The National Housing Trust, Administrator General Department, LAMP, which is the, uh, ad the persons who want to register their land can come out and get information and we have the Victim Support Unit. A number of other services are being offered at the Justice Fair. So what sort of legal advice is offered at these fairs? We're encouraging persons to make a will. We have our will forms that they can get and we also have brochures. We also want to speak to them of the services that we offer. 
we administer estates of deceased persons who die without leaving a will and leaving children under 18 years old. We were taking those estates, we investigate, we find out what the assets are, what the liabilities are, and then in accordance with our new amendment to our act, which give the Administrator General powers to now issue our own grant. We no longer have to go to the court in matters where there are children under 18. We now issue our own grant. And so that expedites the, the estate administration process. We want to share with consumers what their rights are, what their responsibilities are, how they can interface with the marketplace and be very successful in their doings. And certainly we want them to know the roles and the functions of the Consumer Affairs Commission and how the Consumer Affairs Commission assists with uh, you know, bringing justice to them. Banking services, you know, financial, it really doesn't matter. We will try to, to intervene once it's a consumer related issue where you might have spent some money you expect you know, and, and if it's not working, then we will try to assist. I was invited to the expo and I am here collecting brochures. So in order for me to tell my classmates and my co-workers about it, I will have to have information. So I'm here to get information from them. I was at my mechanic and somebody invited me, so I'm here now. And I am not sorry that I came. Would you like to know in which community the Justice Fair will make its next stop? Then contact the Legal Aid Council. They're located at 72 Harbour Street, downtown Kingston. Their number is 948-6999. Seven months. Seven years. Twelve years. Since I became the most important person in the world. There's a big responsibility for Nose. Her future is in I hands. I have to tell him and show him that he is my number one. I want to prepare them for life's journey. So as them grow, them know the difference between right and wrong. I got to make sure that I keep him out of bad company. Because if I don't raise him right, the streets are going to raise him. I feel, she feel. If me stumble, him fall. Knowing I'm responsible for their future, and they're responsible for Jamaica's future. So I won't give up, or I'll allow her to quit. I'm going to make sure I'm safe on the street and narrow. Me prefer to tell them no now, than watch them regret it later. Because to the world, I'm just another person. But to my child and the whole wide world. Adults repeatedly say that we need to see to the care and protection of our children. And it's true, the children are looking to us for the right responses. So little Amira Mendez took to the streets to get commitment of some adults out the road. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amira and today I'll be asking a few persons how we can keep our children safe. Take a look. First and foremost, you have to listen to your kids. Know their friends. Um, be open with them. You know, don't just try to hide what's going on out in the world or whatever. Be open with them. Let them watch the news. After watching the news, you talk to them. Tell them about different methods, how they can stay safe. Encourage them to trust the proper authorities, the doctors, the nurses, the police, you know, use your intuition that God give you. You can go talk to someone if something is happening, especially the counselors in school. Utilize them some more. Have like um, daily or weekly sessions at home as to how to guide them 
into what how are they go on the road and some of the things that they should expect some of their environment like people around their environment and all of that and one of the things that we should do is set a time for bed and and we must ensure that when we set a time we don't go back on our word and we must also ensure that they are in bed then we try to keep away matches got through the gas just thing and the light, I think, they have to try have more preventing from that. Um, we need to make sure that we are staying involved in our children's lives, that we know what they're doing, keep them active in activities, um, particularly get them into the church environment, make sure that they're staying involved in youth groups. Just be really, really involved in your child's life and making sure that you stay on top of everything that they are doing. Just get them some thing for do, even some trade some learning process where them can keep occupied. You alone can guide your child. Just grow your child as anybody can talk to them. Manners and respect and you have a proper growing up child. When they do anything outside the street, you can definitely talk to them. Him grow up in church and give them the right school and teach them the right thing. Keeps like um, forums or events that enforce the safety of children. That's it for today. I hope you were taking notes. Thanks for watching. There are other ways we can help keep children safe. For example, ensuring that they wear seat belts and by helping them to use the road more carefully. Pedestrians can do a lot to ensure that they use the road safely. Like remembering the six steps to use when crossing the road and using them always. Think, is it safe to cross here? Can I see clearly? And can I be seen clearly? Stop. Once you have decided to cross, stop at that spot. Look and listen. Look left and right and listen to see if traffic is approaching. Wait. Ensure the road is fully clear. Cross. Proceed briskly and carefully to the other side. And keep looking and listening. While crossing, look and listen to see if there is any approaching traffic. Some other useful guidelines include wearing light-colored clothing at night. This will allow you to be more clearly seen by other road users. Always walk on the right side of the road towards the oncoming traffic. Make full use of pedestrian crossings, signalized crossing intersections, overhead bridges and other crossing aids as much as possible. Never cross at deep corners where you cannot see vehicles approaching on either side. In areas where there is little or no sidewalk, walk as close as possible to the curb to prevent being hit and avoid being distracted by electronic devices. Parents are also being encouraged to teach their children some good traffic habits, starting with some simple ones. Teach them the six-step method of crossing the road. Tell them never to play in the streets. Accompany them to school, the playground and other areas until they are competent enough to go by themselves and show them the safest areas to cross the road and teach them to use crossing aids properly. It is important to buckle up at all times because not only does a seatbelt save lives, but it helps to prevent lifetime and long-term injuries. It's very important to wear the seatbelt. In case of an accident, the seatbelt will keep you from going forward. In case of sudden impact, you don't, I mean, fly from the seat or from the vehicle, so it keeps you stabilized. And if you don't wear the seat belt, you can be persecuted. So it's very important to drivers to always wear a seat belt, because it's safe life. Persons must remember that the seat belts are installed in the vehicle as a safety device to minimize the injury that you might receive in the event of a collision. So persons who are wearing the seat belt in this fashion Right, this is not the correct way. The seat belt must be worn right across your shoulder. If the seat belt is too high, based on your height, 
then it can be adjusted to fit right across your shoulder. And if you are a tall person, it can also be adjusted so that it fits you as best as possible for your own safety. Children are precious and their safety must be taken into consideration when traveling in a motor vehicle. So if they are too small, a child or booster seat must be used. This is recommended for children under the age of seven. You should also make sure that it is firmly fitted in the vehicle, allowing for minimal forward or sideways movement. Let us use these safety devices to help protect our children from death and serious injuries in road crashes. Finger licking jerk chicken, health fish and bami, we run down yam and banana, roast bread fruit, sweet potato pudding. Mm -mm, Jamaica food sweet. So let's make a pledge to use more local produce and less foreign goods. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Up next, a look at the impact of the Jamaica Forage Clubs on the development of its members. The Jamaica 4-H Clubs is at over 105,000 members and growing strong. This good news also means that more young people will have access to training through the 4-H Clubs. Our mandate is to provide training for youngsters in various areas. As the youth arm of the Ministry of Agriculture, um, that is one of our key focus. With the majority of its membership in schools, the Jamaica 4-H Clubs has been engaging students in both theory and practical skills in many areas. These include the care and management of livestock and small ruminants, agricultural production, agro-processing, home economics, hospitality, clothing and textile, and even aspects of engineering. All this is geared at preparing the youngsters to take on just about any career that may be connected to agriculture. Take for example, Sosna, who is involved in poultry care and management. She believes the training by the 4-H clubs provides a critical platform for achieving her goal. At this point, I'm in grade 10, I do um, agriculture science, so and I, my career choice is uh, an health inspector, so it's really going to help me. So be what I want to be and be productive and successful in everything that I do. Poultry care, production uh, management teaches you a lot of things. You know how to label the chicken, you know the different diseases that can affect your chicken. In addition, she learns how to build a poultry house, how you feed them and how to document data and manage records. So by the time she's ready to inspect a poultry farm, Sosna will know what to look for. For instance, going out into the working field, you see um, the poultry, you go there and you say that they are not sanit they are not performing good sanitation, so therefore at that point you know the different measures you can take and you know that yes, that is not right and those stuff. So you can tell them and give them that good explanation about it. Other 4-H clubites believe that the level of training helps to bring more clarity to their schoolwork. It helped me a lot in my agriculture work and to improve and know about farm animals. Pertaining to, to the areas of science, I think it will help them when the teachers touch on that topic. Staying true to its mandate of providing training, the Jamaica 4-H Clubs has also encouraged and facilitated the formation of 4-H community clubs. Young people leaving school are channeled here to further sharpen their skill sets. Meanwhile, those with academic potential are streamlined to tertiary institutions such as the Ebony Park Heart Academy, College of Agriculture, Science and Education or the Nakalva Agriculture School. 
This is facilitated by way of grants and bursaries. Between 2014 and 2016, 107 agriculture scholarships were issued under the Rio Tinto program. I commend the Board of Trustees of the Rio Tinto Foundation for, in the last three weeks, doubling the resources to provide agricultural scholarship for young people. And what this means, we will be offering a lot more than 107 scholarships. Clubites are urged to get involved in the Youth in Agriculture initiative as this is a prerequisite for scholarships. Information can be obtained at 4-H clubs parish offices. And for those going straight into farming... They will also be provided with input support for agricultural enterprises and cottage industries. The 2014 to 2016 period also saw some 640 youth from rural communities being trained in heavy equipment operations, small equipment repairs, housekeeping and apiculture. They are all certified by the 4-H clubs and Hartrust NTA, with many of them taking up jobs in Canada, other overseas program. For training opportunities, uh, we set a target of 210,000. We are currently at 313,000. So we have exceeded our target by far. It is crucial for us to use the tool of youth entrepreneurship to provide opportunity for our young people to escape the chains of poverty and crime. Yes, the Jamaica 4-H Clubs also engages its members in public speaking as part of the Holistic Personal Development Program. There is also drama. Table setting. Towel folding. And so much more. Here is what the youngsters have to say about the 4-H clubs. It's a fun club and it teaches a lot of things about life and it also helps you to build self-confidence, bring you out into the world and let you explore the world. It teaches you a lot of stuff about agriculture, omic department, your and your health, yes, and it expounds on everything that you do in this world. It can carry you far in agriculture wise. I like what 4-H is doing in Jamaica. And in the words of 4-H Club's Executive Director Ron Blake, the training is building a cadre of youngsters who are empowered towards good citizenship. Having the appropriate value for vocational skills. And most importantly, they are seeing agriculture as a viable career option. That music means we are at the end of our 30 minutes, but you can always stay connected via our website, jis.gov.jm or our YouTube channel. Your feedback is very important to us, so keep sending them to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or tweet at JIS News. We'll be back tomorrow, so on behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson saying thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.